why this particular turtle? This particular turtle has been selected because she's an old age turtle that started breeding in the days when large numbers of our turtles were drowning in prawn trawls. We lost about 86% of all the loggerhead turtles in Queensland um, from drowning in the nets and um, since 2001 we've had turtle exclusion devices to prevent turtles drowning. This turtle lived in a safe habitat so we're going to track her and find out where that safe habitat is so we have a better idea of places that are good for looking after turtles. Um, and so how old do you think she is? Well, uh, they start breeding when they're about 30 years of age. Um, she's been breeding for 20 years, so that means she's approximately 50 years of age, so she's probably a, a middle-aged turtle. And how old was she left for? Uh, that's waiting for the turtles to tell us all of that. At the moment, our longest studied turtles are about 45, 46 years of age, uh, sorry, 45, 46 years of breeding history. But each year they come back, we give you a, a, a longer uh, breeding life. So uh, we haven't reached the point where they, they stop coming back. So uh, they live for a long time, but not the hundreds of years probably, but um, 45 years of, of breeding life is, is pretty good. You could look forward to that sort of thing. Um, and what do we hope to learn? Like from what? Well, first of all, what have we learned from satellite tracking this far? Well, depending on where we, we track the turtles, we'll learn different things. So here at uh, Mon Repo, um, one of the first things we're interested in is where are the turtles while they're making eggs? Um, we've got a, a, um, uh, a summer trawl closure um, during the nesting season. So are the turtles staying within that, that trawl closure? But the port, which is nearby, is not part of that um, management. So one of the things we've found is that um, about 65% of the, the time the turtles spend while they're here making eggs is actually inside the port where we don't have any, any management and um, about 30% of the time is right in the dredge channel where the big ships come in and out and, and they do their dredging and, and things like that. So it's uh, giving us information about habitat use so we can identify threats that might be there and look at how what corrective action we can take. Um, the, the turtles that we tracked from here in the past, we selected them knowing they lived in Moreton Bay and so when they finished nesting they went back to Moreton Bay and we wanted to find out how effective our go slow zones are and we were quite surprised that in fact um, they're, they're spending almost all of their time in our go slow zones. So our go slow zones are actually the, the right sort of scale uh, for looking after the turtles and that's the sort of thing that, that we're learning from it's habitat use and identifying the threats that they might be exposed to. So how do the satellite tags work? Well, the satellite tag is a, um, a radio transmitter um, and it has a, um, a GPS recording device so that it, using GPS satellite tags, sorry, GPS satellites, the, the tag can acquire information on where it is um, and that gets stored in the tag and then when the turtle is, is uh, up taking a breath that information is transmitted via the, the uh, Argos satellite system and we can eventually uh, download it uh, through the, the uh, uh, telephone networks. Um, and so each, we've programmed our tags to take a reading every um, 30 minutes, so um, 48 readings a day. Um, and um, um, while some of those uh, signals don't reach us, the majority do and so we can get successive points where the turtle is in its travels and, and um, uh, plot the, the path that they follow. So this um, centre is expected to get thousands of people through a store each year. What's the importance of that public education for, for people <coughs> to come through the centre and learn about conservation? How does that help? Well, it, it works in, in two ways. Um, there's some basic um, conservation messages we want to give to people about how to look after the environment, the messages about plastic and reducing plastic use, making sure plastics are disposed of properly instead of getting out into the, the streams and, and out to sea. This is sort of part of the education process. But also we find that um, people that come through here quite often um, um, are, are switched on by the turtles. And if they live in coastal areas, they say, okay, we'd like to do something, look after turtles in our area. We run a training program here for, for volunteers 
and uh, we've got uh, many hundreds of, of people living along the coast of South Queensland between Brisbane and, and um, uh, Gladstone uh, who are uh, out on the beach daily recording turtle nesting and uh, we're training them on how to protect eggs if they're in a, a situation where they're at risk from foxes or from erosion. Uh, they're monitoring the, the numbers of turtles nesting. They're um, identifying problems with uh, turtles going the wrong way because of sky glow in developed areas and so on. So, um, you yeah, know, we've got hundreds of people that have, uh, many of them, they, they've come through as, as visitors and then been switched on to wanting to look after turtles in their, their own area. So it's, um, you yeah, know, the eyes and ears of, of conservation along the coast.